evening, and welcome to Beware of Spoilers. I am Adam, in a very loud car, because it is 10 degrees out, and my car is very cold. Um, as am I, to be completely honest, because it's 10 degrees out, and very windy. Um, so, I just saw a knock at the cabin, and really you keeping track, I was going to do Old on Tuesday, the M. Night Shyamalan movie, about the beach where people go to and they rapidly age, um, and uh, I watched that Monday night, so all week I was dreading this movie, so, because I was like, holy shit, that was awful, like, if Old is that bad, like, and, and that's kind of what we're using as a frame of reference of quality, like, how could this movie be any better. Like, what about this movie would make it better than old? And, you know, so that was my concern going into this. I was very, you know, it's like, do I really want to see this? Not really. Um, whatever. I'll tell you what movie I'm definitely not going to see in a the theater. Uh, Evil Dead Rise. Um, I, uh, I may pull in the horror correspondent on that one because I have not, I'm not seeing that in a the theater. Um, but here's the thing about Knock at the Cabin, um, and, and full spoilers for those who may not know, there's a spoiler warning. Now, basically what I'm going to tell you is that everything the movie tells you about what the movie is, is true. Um, all the marketing... Everything we see about the movie, everything about it, it's all true. I feel like Han Solo in the trailer for uh, The Force Awakens. It's, all, it's true, all of it. The, the Force, the Jedi, you know. Yeah, but it is all true. Everything we see in that trailer is accurate to what the movie is. You have these two guys, they're married, and they have this little girl they adopted. And they go out to this cabin on vacation, cabin on the lake. Um, these four people come. One of which is Ron from Harry Potter. And that's a little distracting. Um, they come to this, you know, to, to this, you know, cabin. And they tell the, the couple and the little girl they need to make a choice. One of them needs to die. One of the three of them needs to die. One of the others has to kill them. And if they don't make that choice, then the universe is going, the, the world is going to end. The, uh... You know, and, and it's like, you know, tsunamis will hit major cities on the coast. A, um, like a plague will be unleashed. And a, what was the other one? And a, uh, the, the third, and, and planes will fall out of the sky and everything like that. So obviously they don't believe them because it's ridiculous. Like, so they don't believe them and they get, you know... And here's the thing, too. I think if you go into this movie having not seen old, you may have a better sense of what this is. I think old really poisons the well to an extent because of how straight-laced they play old. Where, as I'm watching it on Monday, um, it's like they, they play it completely straight that you're on this, you know, this beach and you age rapidly. Um, and... All of that happens, and then you get to the end, and it's like, oh yeah, we found this beach where people age rapidly, so let's just send people there to test medications on them and the long-term effects. And it's like, okay, cool. Like, I, like, I, I understand what you're going for. All makes sense to an extent. Um, but herein lies the problem. Is that because that's played so straight, now I see this one, and I'm like, okay, so are they going to be playing this straight again? Is that what we're doing? Or are we sitting here and are we watching this and going like, you know, like, are we playing this straight or are we playing this as a, um, what's it called? Like, as something that will be a little bit deeper. Are we playing this as something where we need the explanation about, you know, what's actually going on in this world? Or is it just, you know, okay, yeah, you got to kill these people, otherwise, you got to kill someone, otherwise the world's going to end. That's a, th those are two very different questions. Those are two very important questions going into this. And I think that having seen old, now seeing this, it's just like, yeah, but it's not anything. Like, 
it's, 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 they're telling the truth. It's just weird shit's happening, and that's why the weird shit, the weird shit's happening is because they're telling you the truth, so just listen to them, and that's it. And then for the movie to play out the way it does, I'm just kind of like, why is that the, the ultimate... Like, like, as I'm watching it, it continues to go, and they're trying, they're justifying it. And the thing is, too, the movie is, is going out of its way to try and convince you that it's all bullshit, and it's kind of annoying. And they show back, they show backstory for the, for the couple, and I'm like, I don't need their backstory. Like, I really don't need their back, I don't need the explanation as to why he has the gun. I don't need the, the backstory about why he, uh, what's it called, why he needs a, um, you know, why they adopted a little girl, or how it was when they were dating, and trying to introduce one to the other's parents, and all of this kind of stuff, like, I don't think any of that's necessary, I think that, like, them being a happy family is all we need to, to get to the end of this, and be like, okay, so this is why this is happening, I'd be more interested, see, and that's the issue, too, if they just played it straight the entire way through, you can have a lot more fun with this, and you can have a lot more of an interesting story, and the, and, and that's the issue. I, I'm like, I know this happens every time. I always say I hate being the guy who's going to sit here and rewrite the movie, and I always do. But at the same time, when you watch this movie, to to see the story play out this way, and to see you know what's it called, to see it play out where you have the this you know this couple doing that, like, you know, who's just going on vacation, and then shit goes wrong, like, it's an interesting, you know, thing to do, but at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, why is that something that, like, why is this integral for us to, to see, to understand, what part of this is important? I don't know, I feel like I'm rambling a little bit. Parts because I'm cold and parts because I'm trying to get, you know, what's about me as I'm driving. Now look, here, here's the thing, though. Like, had they, they should have just played that straight and let you go into the backstory of Lang, go into the backstory of all the other, you know, Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Like, let that play into it. Instead of it coming at the end and having Jonathan Groff exposit it to us. And it's like, okay, great, like... If he has to sit here and lay out the explanation for what aspects of humanity they represent, then you're doing something wrong. Like, th- th- there's something incorrect happening here, and, and I think that's where this movie kind of fundamentally fails, is that you're doing this big symbolic thing, and you're doing this big story that's designed to be biblical, in a, well, I mean, not in a sense, literally biblical, and it's, it's the end of time, it's the book of Revelations, and... If this is your design, and this is what you're trying to do, then why are we making it so nebulous about this part? When you could have it be these characters are grappling with what's more important, saving humanity or saving themselves. Like, if you play it completely straight, you can do a lot more interesting of a story instead of here having it where it's kind of like Shyamalan has his head up his own ass and he's like oh people will expect me to have a twist in there so let me play both sides of the coin against each other and then you know that that'll be the entire entertaining experience but what you're creating is an experience where if you go into it like the the only big reveal is that okay everyone's telling the truth okay so great moving on like you can do it either way but because you spend so much of a runtime playing both sides of it, neither side gets properly handled, neither side of the story is properly explained or or shown to the viewer. Um, and ultimately, that's where this movie kind of fails a little bit, is that because it's too focused on, like, are they lying? Are they telling the truth? It's like, well, who, like, at the end of the day, like, if you're going to do the are they lying, are they telling the truth, you can't end it with they're telling the truth. Because that's not a satisfying way to end the story. If you're going to end it with... If you're going to do that story, you have to do it where they're lying. And then you get to the end, and it was all some big, fake thing. And it was all just something to get one to kill the other. Which is what they kind of were alluding to the whole thing was. And it's like... it Like, that in and of itself is a great way to, to do it. It's tragic, and it's, but it's a more interesting story. 
letting them, you know, figure that out for themselves. Then, on the other side, if you're going to do it where it's like, oh, they're telling the truth the whole time, show us them finding each other. Show us them seeing these visions. Show us them, you know, show me them. Because at the end of the day, if that's the case, and these are just the people who have to make the decision, then all of this other bullshit doesn't matter. All of the other bullshit doesn't matter. Because it's like, we don't need to see the, the, the adoption of, of the little girl because we know they adopted her. Because she's there. We don't need to see that. We don't need to see them starting to date. We don't need to... Like, all of that stuff is not important in this in, to, for this narrative if you're doing this story. Like, arguably the only flashback they show that's important and at that point it doesn't matter because they've already revealed it is the flash, and that's the issue too, is they have this reveal that um, Ron, I'm just going to call him Ron, they, they, they call him Red Man or something else during the movie, but I'm just going to call him Ron, um, because it's Rupert Grant playing him, but they have this big reveal that at one point in the past, not Jonathan Groff, the other guy, was assaulted in a bar as part of a bar fight, and the guy was arrested and did time. Now, we, we don't know about that until about halfway through the movie, after they've already killed him off. And I'm watching this, and I'm like, none of this matters now. None of this... At, at the point in the story you're expositing this information, none of it fucking matters. In the slightest. And it's like, just move on. Just get to the end of the story. Get to the... is Because that's the thing is, by the time you get, like, halfway through the movie, you're like, can we just get a discovery about whether or not any of this is real or not? Because that's all I care about is, were they lying or weren't they lying? And that's not a good way to do it, because now... Like, if you do it if you do it this way, I have no reason to ever want to rewatch this movie. There's no there's there's no incentive for me to be like, okay, let me go back and see. Are there little hints? Is there this? Is there this? Like, I know what it is. It's okay. They were telling the truth the whole time. Like, who cares? Like, like that that's my ultimate problem with the movie. Um. So uh, so yeah, I think we'll wrap up there for today because I'm about to get home and I would like to eat dinner and go to bed, because tomorrow morning, Josie and I are recording early, and then I have a trip to make, and then <sighs> Sunday I'm seeing 80 for Brady, because there, there are very few movies that I queue up to go see on my phone that I'm like, why didn't I get into this? And 80 for Brady is one of those movies. Um, I have zero interest in seeing 80 for Brady, yet I have a feeling it'll probably be good for content. Because I can put Tom Brady in the hashtag. Um, in the tags, and people will find it that way. Um, especially since you retired last week. So thank you, Tom Brady, for helping me out a little bit. Um, but we'll wrap up there for today. Knock at the cabin. Maybe just wait for it to go to the street. But if you're really morbidly curious about it, like, it's another one of these M. Night Shyamalan kind of duds. That he hasn't made a good movie in a long time. Um, with the exception of possibly Split. I haven't seen Split, but it's possible that Split is what, what you know, the, the one that's good in the mix. But, or maybe just it's good for a January movie kind of thing, but, like, whatever, you know. Skip it, wait for it to go to streaming. I think this is a universal movie. And that's a pre- level of pretentiousness that I can't stand, um, is the idea that um, him opening the movie with the retro Universal logo... I was like, oh, fuck you. I can't stand when movies do that, where they show the old logo to be like, oh, this is prestige. Fuck all the way off with that. Um, and I just know that Bo is Scared is just gonna annoy the crap out of me. That new Ari Aster movie that is from A24 and stars Joaquin Phoenix. It's got, like, all of the little, like, telltale signs that it's gonna be the, the, uh, it's gonna make a, uh, you know, film nerds all over the planet come in their pants. So, I'm not exactly thrilled about that. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, we, we will be recording tomorrow morning the Exploring Hyperspace Lanes episode for Battlefront and Battlefront 2, the 2004-2005 ones that came out uh, well back, way back in the day. Um, and we will also be recording a 30-minute reviews episode about Black Panther Wakanda Forever, um, which, will, which is uh, now on Disney+. Plus. So that we're recording tomorrow. We also have 80 for Brady on, um, what's it called? We also have 80 for Brady on, uh, on Sunday. And, uh, next week is Magic Mike's Last Dance. 
and we're going to finish up uh, National Treasure next week as well. And I think also, doesn't the Harley Quinn Valentine's Day special come out on Thursday? I think it does. So Harley Quinn, and then we also have uh, The Flash coming back for its uh, final season. Uh, so all of that is coming within the next week. So until then, have a great rest of your week.